The effects of centroid eccentric loading on the drop jump exercise and the subsequent post activation potentiation response. The authors of this paper are myself, Lee Bridgman, Professor Michael McGuigan, Dr. Nicholas Gill, and Dr. Deb Delson. The drop jump is a plyometric exercise that is widely used by strength conditioning coaches. It has been suggested to result in improved utilisation of the stretch shortening cycle and also results in high eccentric force production. Previously, training using the drop jump exercise from reported to lead to improvements in sprint performance, jump performance, enhanced strength, and greater agility, and therefore may be an attractive option to SNC coaches. It's also been proposed that the inclusion of a low volume of drop jumps may lead to subsequent enhancements in performance as a result of the post activation potentiation response. When using plyometric activities such as the drop jump, it's been proposed that preferential recruitment of type 2 most units may be responsible for subsequent acute enhancements in lower body performance. Although the intensity of the drop jump exercise is usually dictated by drop height, previous research suggested that another method for altering intensity is by manipulating the mass of an individual. A further alternative to this, constant additional load approach, is suggesting that dumbbells or bands provide accentuated eccentric loading during the eccentric phase of the drop jump exercise. Thus, as an athlete reaches the bottom position of their counter movement jump upon landing on a raised platform, they release the dumbbells or bands and perform the concentric phase without any additional load. At present, there is no research which has investigated the effects of using dumbbells to provide an AEL during the drop jump exercise and its ability to improve subsequent lower body performance as a result of the PAP phenomenon. Therefore, the aim of the study was to investigate the use of dumbbells to provide centroid eccentric loading during a drop jump and its subsequent effects on counter movement jump performance. The subjects in the study performed five drop jumps with no additional load and with an accentuated eccentric load equal to 10, 20, and 30% of their individual body mass. In this study, dumbbells were used to provide the additional load the eccentric loading. On completion of the drop jumps, the subjects completed three counter movement jumps after two, six and twelve minutes. What we found, the main findings of the study were that one set of five drop jumps using an AL of 20% of each individual's body mass resulted in significantly greater counter movement jump height comparison with their baseline counter movement jump performance and also counter movement jumps following the body weight only and the 10 and 30 percent AEL drop jump conditions. The AEL condition with 20 percent additional load also produced a greater peak power output during the subsequent counter movement jumps in comparison with baseline, the body weight drop jumps and the 10 percent AEL drop jumps. It was also found that counter movement jump height was significantly greater after 2 minutes recovery compared with 12 minutes and after 6 minutes compared with 12 minutes. Biometric activities such as a drop jump have been reported to carry a greater potential to induce a pat response compared to traditional resistance exercises such as the back squat due to their high intensity. This increase in pat potential may be the consequence of plyometric exercises leading to preferential recruitment of type 2 motor units which is one of the premises that underpin post-activation potentiation. In addition, eccentric contractions that occur during drop jumps have been reported to result in increased muscular temperature leading to higher muscular activation, also increased storage and recoil of the elastic energy, and enhanced phosphorylation of the myosin light chain, all of which may contribute to increased subsequent counter movement jump performance. Thus, in this current study, it is suggested that the 20% AEL drop jump condition was the optimal additional load required by the subjects to take advantage of the PAP response. Repeated contractions can lead to fatigue and impaired performance, but also may result in potentiation and improved performance. Initially, in completing the exercise, fatigue effects are prone to dominate. However, potentiation has been reported to last longer. Plyometric activities have been proposed to result in less fatigue in comparison with traditional resistance exercises. Therefore, the recovery duration needed to induce a PAP response may be reduced compared with heavy resistance exercises such as a squat due to reductions in system mass. This may make them better suited for inclusion in a warm-up designed to enhance performance 
in subsequent competitions such as the high jump. One potential limitation to this study was that the optimal drop height for each subject was initially identified with no additional load. Therefore, in future, investigators may wish to look at the effect of this additional load has on the optimal drop height for each athlete. In addition, the mechanisms which resulted in enhanced performance in the 20% AL drop competition need to be further investigated. Practical explanations. Based on the findings of this current study, athletes may benefit from including an AL drop jump protocol as part of their warm up. Athletes would then, two minutes before completing, complete five AL drop jumps as a part of their warm up with an additional load of 20% body mass. This may lead to enhancements in subsequent vertical jump performance, which may be beneficial in events such as the long jump or the high jump. The authors would also like to thank subjects for participating in this study and also their thanks to Frank Borger and Chloe Everson for their assistance during the data collection.